So if there is a deficiency of clotting factors, what will happen? What are the manifestations of deficiency of clotting factors? The manifestation of deficiency of clotting factors is a deep bleed, such as bleeding into joints or heme arthrosis and bleeding into muscles, formation of hematoma in the muscles. So if you, you see any of, these, any of these two manifestation or presentation in any patient, you will uh, suspect a clotting factor disorder, such as hemophilia. Hemophilia is a common clotting factor disorder that will be asked in the PLAB1. So hemophilia is basically an X-linked recessive disorder of coagulation. Uh, males are, because it is an X-linked disorder, so males uh, will be typically affected and females will be carrier. Hemophilia A is due to deficiency of clotting factor 8 and hemophilia B is deficiency of clotting factor 9. Clinically, we cannot differentiate between uh, hemophilia A and B because both of them can present with uh, bleeding into joints and bleeding into the muscles. So skin and mucosal bleed, uh, there's a defect in the platelets. Joints and muscular bleed, there's defect in the clotting factors such as hemophilia. So someone with a history of spontaneous bleeding into joints, especially knee joint, ankle joint, and elbow joint, without a history of significant trauma. Spontaneous bleed into large joints will always be pathognomic of hemophilia. And intramuscular hemorrhages can lead to compartment syndrome due to compression of the blood vessels and nerves. What is the initial investigation in case of hemophilia? The test that we do is APTT. Remember that activated partial thromboplastin time is used to check the clotting factor eight and nine. Though it can check other clotting factors such as one, two, and 10 as well, but for now, just remember that if we want to uh, check the deficiency of clotting factor eight and nine, then the test that we'll use is APTT. So APTT is basically a test that is used to detect the deficiency of clotting factors eight and nine. So if there's prolonged APTT, then we'll say either there's deficiency of clotting factor eight or clotting factor nine. The person is either having a hemophilia A or hemophilia B. So all other investigation normal, bleeding time normal, platelet count normal, but APTT is prolonged. So you will suspect hemophilia. And now you will confirm your diagnosis by checking the factor eight and uh, nine levels. If uh, factor eight is deficient, then it is hemophilia A. And if it, factor nine is deficient, then it is hemophilia B. So after diagnosing the hemophilia, uh, the treatment of uh, both of them is uh, same. Uh, someone with the hemophilia A, the treatment is either desmopressin because desmopressin can raise uh, factor eight levels. So that's why desmopressin can be used in the treatment of hemophilia A. But if the person is having a major bleed, such as heme arthrosis or bleeding into the joint, then a treatment with a recombinant factor eight may be required. Remember that never give an IM injection to the patient with hemophilia, because IM injection will lead to formation of the hematoma, that's why IM injections will always be avoided in patient with hemophilia. And the treatment of hemophilia B is because there is efficiency of factor nine. So recombinant factor nine is the treatment of choice. Desmopressin has no role in the treatment of hemophilia B because desmopressin can only raise the levels of factor eight. 
and not factor 9 so that's why desmopressin can be used in the treatment of hemophilia a but not in the treatment of hemophilia b exam tip that you need to remember uh, for hemophilia is that uh, you need to avoid two things in patient with hemophilia one is to avoid NSAIDs because NSAIDs can lead to bleeding and the person with hemophilia is already bleeding so NSAIDs will be avoided for pain killers or for pain relief will give uh, opioids such as tramadol or codeine etc NSAID will never be given to patient with hemophilia and second IM injections will not be or never be given to patient with hemophilia so key points in hemophilia is someone with a history of uh, bleeding into joints or bleeding into muscles or on lab investigation prolonged APTT you will suspect hemophilia so prolonged bleeding time ITP prolonged APTT hemophilia so now our next disease is von Willebrand's disease so we discussed that hemophilia is a x-link recessive disorder and x-link disorders they affect more, uh, mainly or mostly males so hemophilia uh, will uh, usually affect males now the third bleeding disorder is von willebrand disease what is a von willebrand disease von willebrand disease is the most common inherited bleeding disorder so it is a commonly asked question in the player one remember that what is the function of von willebrand factor if you remember the function of von willebrand factor then uh, you will never forget how to diagnose von willebrand disease there are two functions of von willebrand factor and uh, these two functions they include that it is a carrier molecule for factor 8 and second is that it promotes platelet adhesion to damaged endothelium it is a carrier of for factor 8 and it is it promotes platelet adhesions to damaged epithelium so it means if there is deficiency of uh, one blend uh, one willy band factor two things will happen deficiency of uh, factor 8 and uh, dysfunction of the platelets remember that in von willebrand disease uh, there is no problem with the platelets but the thing or the factor that is required for their adhesion to the damaged epithelium that is von willebrand factor uh, that is deficient so if there is deficiency of von willebrand factor uh, there will be uh, problem with the clotting and problem with the formation of a platelet plaque so Sir, same with the hemophilia hemophilia is uh, how hemophilia is different from von willebrand disease no, this is a, no i'm talking about the clinical presentation yes clinical presentation will be uh, not uh, like hemophilia because mm -hmm. you can see that uh, keeping in mind that there's deficiency of factor 8 as well as uh, this dysfunction of the platelets so it can present to you uh, with the features of both platelet disorder and clotting disorder that mm -hmm. the patient will present yeah. you with uh, he, uh, skin and superficial bleed and mucosal, uh, mucosal bleed and deep bleed such as bleed into joints and muscles as well so you're talking about hemophilia right that is hemophilia. a platelet yeah platelet disorder is itp and clotting disorder is okay. hemophilia okay the platelet okay. disorder will manifest as a superficial bleed such as skin and mucosal bleed and a clotting <coughs> factor disorder 
uh, will manifest as a deep bleed such as bleeding into joint and into muscles in von willebrand disease because there is a deficiency of factor 8 as well as dysfunction of the platelets so both of the features can be present in von willebrand disease sorry can you explain about this oh. uh, the adhesion uh, to the endothelial cells i couldn't get that uh, as you can see in this diagram normally when there is an injury to the vessels a platelet plug is formed that is uh, these platelets they stick to the endothelium and then they stick with one another to form a platelet plug and for this sticking they required a von willebrand factor right because von willebrand factor they help the platelets in sticking together right. and there is no von willebrand factor this platelet will not stick together and a plug will not be formed and bleeding will not be stopped right so there are two functions one one is uh, like in von willebrand there will be a uh, deficiency of factor 8 and and the other one is like uh, uh, the and the platelets there will be a problem with the platelets so keeping in mind these two points uh, can somebody tell me uh, what will be the uh, findings in lab investigation in case of von willebrand disease what will happen to aptt what will happen to bleeding time so bleeding time should be raised if there is a problem with the platelets yes. yes prolonged bleeding time and APT will be uh, increased. APTT will be. It's it will because it will also be increased. So raised APTT and raised bleeding time. Then one. You will suspect yes, one will brand. Only raised uh, bleeding time, then you will suspect ITP. I Only raised APTT, then you will suspect hemophilia. and if both of them are raised then you will think about von willebrand disease because von willebrand factor is involved in both of them i hope this point is clear to everyone now yes it is thank mm -hmm. you so remember that uh, as i told you that it, uh, von willebrand disease can present with features of mucosal bleed or skin bleed or it can present with uh, features of hemarthrosis but remember that uh, uh, the features of uh, uh, deep bleed such as hemarthrosis or hematomas they are very rare person with von willebrand disease will present to you with features of skin and mucosal bleed that is epistaxis menorrhagia how you are going to differentiate it from itp in itp uh, there will be thrombocytopenia but in von willebrand disease there will be no thrombocytopenia because uh, platelets are not being destroyed platelet count is normal only the chemical that is required for their sticking together that is deficient and the other point on the basis of which you can differentiate between itp and von willebrand disease is prolongation of aptt is that right everyone so there are three types of von willebrand von willebrand disease uh, is an uh, autosomal dominant disease so it will affect uh, males and it will affect females as well while hemophilia was uh, x linked recessive disease uh, so hemophilia will affect only uh, males uh, but von willebrand disease is an autosomal dominant it is an autosomal disease so it will affect both males and females there are three types of von willebrand uh, disease one is in which there is partial reduction of von willebrand factor and this is the most common type and the second type is abnormal form of von willebrand factor in which there is abnormality uh, in the von willebrand factor and the third type is total lack of von willebrand factor so these types are just for your knowledge they are not important for 
PLAB 1 exam. The thing that is important for PLAB 1 exam is how to differentiate between von Willebrand disease, hemophilia, and ITP. <clears throat> So investigation will show a prolonged bleeding time, a prolonged APTT, because APTT check uh, protein factor eight and nine. There will be no thrombocytopenia and there will be defective platelet aggregation with a chemical that is known as uh, risotocetin. Management is very simple. <clears throat> because there is efficiency of uh, factor eight. So factor eight concentrate or desmopressin can be given. And if bleeding is mild, then tranexamic acid can be given to control the bleeding. <clears throat> so the three most important points you need to know in volumity blend disease for PLAB are in patient with mucosal bleeding, epistaxis, menorrhagia, it's, it's, uh, we have discussed that epistaxis and menorrhagia means a platelet disorder. And the second point that you need to remember that, so the presentation, the common presentation of von Willebrand uh, disease is uh, just like a platelet disorder. And the second thing is it's an autosomal dominant. And the role of von Willebrand factor is that it promotes platelet aggregation and it is a carrier molecule for factor eight. So in von Willebrand disease, APTT and bleeding time both will be prolonged. In hemophilia, only APTT will be prolonged because in hemophilia, there is no problem with the platelets or platelet aggregation. So only APTT is prolonged. So uh, we discussed uh, this uh, slide already that prothrombin time, uh, there are uh, two tests, three tests you can say, prothrombin time or activated partial thromboplastin time, APTT. Uh, thrombin time uh, is not important for PLAB, D dimers and bleeding time. Prothrombin time, it checks the factor one to five, seven, 10. Remember that uh, this two, seven, nine and 10, they are vitamin K dependent clotting factors and warfarin inhibits the, uh, these factors uh, inhibit the active form of vitamin K. So, Warfarin will be monitored with this test, that is prothrombin time. And activated partial thromboplastin time, it checks the function of 1, 2, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. You only need to remember these two, that is factor 8 and 9. If you want to check factor 8 and 9, you will go for an APTT. So if there's problem with the APTT, APTT is raised, then you will think about either it's a deficiency of factor 8 or factor 9. And if PT, prothrombin time is prolonged, then you will think about warfarin or vitamin K deficiency or liver disease, etc. Uh, D dimers are basically fibrin degradation products. So whenever there's excessive clotting in the body, fibrin uh, degradation product or D-dimer will also increase. And bleeding time, we have already discussed that. It is uh, for the diagnosis of platelet disorder. So PTT or APTT prolonged hemophilia, uh, APTT and bleeding time prolonged von Willebrand disease and if PT, APTT, bleeding time, all of them, all of three of them are prolonged, then we'll think about DIC. Everything is disseminated in intravascular coagulation. Everything will be 
prolonged except two things, and that is platelets and fibrinogens. APTT, PT, bleeding time, D-dimer, all of them will be raised, and two things will be decreased, that is platelets and fibrinogen. Then our diagnosis will be BIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation. So let's do some examples. A 14 year old male has developed excessive bleeding after tooth extraction. He notes that he bruises easily with mild trauma. Hemoglobin is 120, WBC is 7, PT is 12, APTT is 84, bleeding time is normal. So only PTT, partial thromboplastin time is prolonged. So what is your diagnosis? Hemophilia. Yes, that's right. Hemophilia is an excellent uh, recessive disorder. And in the scenario uh, given here is a male uh, who has uh, excessive bleeding after tooth extraction, though you can see that features of uh, deep bleed such as hemarthrosis or hematoma is not present. But still we diagnosed it on the basis of lab investigations. So that's why it's important to remember the lab investigations that isolated prolonged partial thromboplastin time, you will suspect hemophilia. Again, another scenario, a four-year-old boy has easy bleeding into joints. So this is a straightforward. Bleeding into joints is always spontaneous. Bleeding into joints is always hemophilia. His uncle and grandfather had the same condition. All the males are affected, so it's these two points favors the diagnosis of hemophilia and an X-linked recessive disease. So now a 16-year-old girl presents with profuse bleeding after a dental extraction. Her father and paternal grandmother have experienced similar problems. What is the diagnosis in this case? Von Willebrand. Von Willebrand. Yes, because uh, this disease uh, is affecting uh, both males and females. So it is mostly a bleeding disorder that is autosomal inheritance and the only bleeding disorder with autosomal inheritance is von Willebrand disease. So, so far we have discussed uh, bleeding disorders, three causes of bleeding disorders. One was uh, due to platelet dysfunction, that 